My name is Brian Watkins and this is a tutorial for my Accounting 201 students in Section 2. And what we did is we handed out in class today, the 30th of January, a list of blank journal entries where you were given only this amount here which uh, information is an explanation of the transaction that you've identified. Remember we identify the transactions then we analyze and record. And so the purpose of this exercise was to help you see how to analyze and record these transactions that appear in uh, italics. So the first one, what we have is uh, an increase to an asset because we're going to put cash into our pocket. And I hope that you got from class today that uh, the trick I always use is that cash is always increased with a debit. It's on the left side of the accounting equation, which is right here, and everything on the left increases with a debit, everything on the right increases with a credit. So debit just being on the left, credits being on the right, what we're going to do to reflect an investment of 15000 is debit cash for 15000 and credit owner's equity. And I want you, uh, as you're beginning in, in this kind of a practice, I want you to take and think of what's happening with each account. The cash account is increasing which then pushes this side of the equation up, so you have to push the other side of the equation up to balance it, and that, that's the owner's equity account. And the owner's equity account is a credit account, so it increases and everything is back into balance. Just kind of picture this as a seesaw in your mind, with the fulcrum being the, the equal sign, and every time you have a journal entry, imagine to yourself, okay, I've, I've either pushed assets up or down, or maybe I've, I've kept them constant. So let's look at the second transaction. We borrow $45,000. Remember, you have to understand there's two ways to get capital into your business. Either you sell a part of your business, which means you give equity, or you borrow money from the bank, which is to create a liability. So your cash went up, and the other side of the equation has to go up, but this is a note payable, reflecting that you borrowed the money, you created a promissory note, and so you then push the uh, right side of the equation up. And you do that with a credit. So the debit and the credit match. Cash goes up, note payable goes up. Increase asset, increase liability. Now, I wanted you to see, um, uh, to, to understand that the accounts represent categories. I said widget machine. And I left it to you to understand that a widget machine is an asset because we're going to use it to provide uh, probable economic benefit in the future. Can't operate your business without it. That makes it an asset. So when I buy it, I increase my asset account machine by 20000 but I'm going to use cash to buy it. So what I've done is I've basically shuffled assets. My equation never went up or down because I pushed it, uh, it, it was neutral. I increased the asset and I decreased it in exactly the same amount. So I was never out of balance there um, with respect to that. I just renamed one of my asset categories. And essentially what that would mean is that you would then have, your balance sheet would still be in balance, but you'd have a new line item to reflect this new asset, the machine. In our next entry, we reflect the purchase of some inventory on account. And this doesn't, if we'd used cash, we'd have a similar entry where we increased an asset and decreased an asset. But here we're going to purchase inventory on account which creates a liability, a new account payable. So yes, we're going to increase assets, so we're going we're to push that asset side of the equation up, but then we're going to push the liability side up as well to push it back into balance. So we have the inventory of 10000 offset by an account payable of 10000 Now this next entry is one that you must study. You have to understand this to really know uh, what you're doing in accounting. And I'm sorry I just made your accounting equation disappear, but uh, let's look at what's happening here. This is what happens when you have sales revenue. Whenever uh, from operations of the business, uh, ordinary operations, you create money, that money is a revenue. So you increase your cash because you put $2,500 into the bank and the corresponding entry for the debit to cash is an increase or a credit 
to revenue. Remember, revenue is on the other side of the equation, and when you increase revenue, you're increasing equity. Uh, that's where your income is. We don't have an income account that we post to, and uh, what income really represents is expenses less revenue. So just remember this basic entry, uh, it's two parts, and that will help you tremendously to understand what's going on with your accounts when you sell um, or do some aspect of your business that creates an asset. So here's cash, 2500 sales revenue, 2500 and that is the amount that you got from the customer. In order to produce that revenue, you sold inventory. But if you're selling your inventory for exactly, if your inventory rather is worth exactly what you're selling it for, you're a poor business person. So in reality, your inventory, you bought, uh, you bought it low, and then you sold it uh, higher to create a profit. So if you were to take 2500 out of your inventory account, you'd be taking too much. So what we do is we take an expense, and the expense we use is the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold increases the expense account, which has the effect of decreasing your income account. Okay, remember that uh, revenues and expenses are subcategories. So expenses are always offset by uh, a decrease in assets. You increase your expense and you decrease your asset. And together, those two entries for the 1st of December represent how to book a sale of products. Understand that and you really are ahead of the game when it comes to making these things more complicated. So just remember that in the first part, it's actually what you've collected. And in the second part, it's the uh, value on your books of the inventory that's out the door. It's the cost of the goods you sold. So let that name of that account help you. All right, now, in any business, you're going to pay some expenses. Uh, paying expenses with cash is simply increase the expense and decrease the asset. So here's payment of interest on a bank loan, would be interest expense, and then a corresponding credit to cash, which means, remember, a credit in an asset account means you're decreasing it. Same kind of thing exactly for rent expense. You're increasing expense and decreasing asset. And what I wanted you to see here is that expenses are, are really accounted for in the same way. And why don't we just all, why don't we lump them together and call them operating expenses the way I do in a, in a later uh, journal entry? It's because we want our income statement to have some value to users of information and we want to see where the expenses are so that we can see how much uh, the business is paying in interest and how much it's paying in rent. And the way we do that is we create these accounts that then become line items in the statements. Okay. We have uh, another sale, and uh, what we do is we increase the asset, but this time we didn't get cash. We got a promise to pay. So we're going to increase the account receivable asset, and then the corresponding credit to sales revenue. You understand this one now. You go down, and we found out that uh, we didn't make quite the same profit on the sale. Uh, we had 750 inventory sold, so you can see that buried in those two entries, if I take revenues minus... Uh, expenses, there are $250 in profit lurking there to get at the end of the year when we, when we balance up all of our accounts. So at the end of this transaction, you've taken the correct amount out of the inventory account, you've booked it to expense, and you've created a new asset instead of putting money in your cash account. Now, this 10th of December entry was a mistake on my part, but it's going to teach you something valuable. What we did is we received $3,000 on account. If you're watching carefully, you realize that our account receivable from 7th of December that we created was only 1000 For some reason, we now have a customer that paid money ahead on the receivable. And so the way this is accounted for, we keep it as an accounts receivable, but the account receivable, because it applies to one customer, is going to have a negative balance. It's going to be what's called a contra-asset account. Accounts receivable are always assets, whether they're positive or negative. 
So we're going to have to treat this a little different way on the balance sheet. It's one of those little complications that's coming up in the future. And now I guess is as good a time as any to introduce you to a Contra account. Uh, but essentially, this is how you do it. You, you put the money in the cash account, 3000 and you credit the account receivable account. Just uh, what's going to happen at the end is we're going to look at the 1000 there and the 3000 here and we're going to end up with a negative balance in an asset account, which is perfectly acceptable. It will stay in balance. We've increased an asset, decreased an asset, and you'll see why uh, accounting works so well. So we come down here, we pay another expense. Uh, that's something that you're familiar with. Repair expense, paid with cash, increase the expense, decrease the asset. Now the second one, uh, the 20th of December, the operating expense and the operating expense payable. GAAP requires you to identify expenses when they are incurred. That way you know truly how much income you have in an operating period. So instead of paying it, you have to book it as a payable. And you'll remember that uh, the uh, NIMRO uh, materials call this the uh, the uh, general or the correct way of doing it and there's a lazy way of doing it but just so you understand if you book an expense which is due and you haven't been able to pay it yet you put it on account it's not appropriate to wait till the end of the year because this operating expense should contribute to a reduction in income for this year in 20th of December it doesn't matter if you don't pay it yet so you have an offset instead of offsetting cash you're going to increase a liability, an operating expense payable, which you'll carry on your balance sheet as a liability. All right, the final sales transaction. By now, it should just be automatic for you. We got $4,500 cash from a sale. So we put the $4,500 in the cash account, and then we credit the sales revenue account, and then we go down and we take the amount of inventory. This looks like it was a particularly profitable sale, because the cost of goods we sold to create that $4,500 sales revenue was only $1,500. So we increase the expense, we decrease the asset, and you can see real quick here, I just want you to take a moment, if we forgot the second entry, then we would create two errors. Our sales revenues would be overstated because we really had to buy some things to sell. That wasn't $4,500 of pure profit and our inventory account would be wrong because it's now missing fifteen hundred dollars and if we don't take that fifteen hundred dollars worth of goods out of the inventory uh, it's going to look like we lost them or they were stolen uh, it's going to cause a problem so this two-part entry very important to learn finally at the end of the year our owner says hey I'm gonna pay myself a thousand dollars for an end-of-year bonus and uh, does that by taking a capital draw there are uh, special ways to do this but for purposes of this um, example let's just call it a debit to your owner's capital account and a credit to cash and if you're not sure how to treat the equity account just remember that cash came out of pocket and that means you credit your cash account an asset always decreases when you put something on the right so that means on the left you have to have a corresponding increase um, to balance the entry so the owner's capital serves to decrease the equity at the same time you're decreasing the asset which keeps your uh, equation into balance. Okay, having finished your, your journal entries, what you need to do at the end of the year is you need to post all of your journal entries to a ledger. And the reason you're doing that is so that you can figure out what the account balances are so that you can put them into your financial statements. And you'll see here that we had a whole series. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, 10 uh, transactions that involved your cash account. So you have to put all the debits on the left, credits on the right. And uh, essentially, what you're doing, I'll just show you Excel to get that number, is we took the sum of the debits minus the sum of the credits, and that told us what our cash account is. Uh, we did the same thing for inventory. Uh, ideally, you do this for every line in the statements, but uh, there's not enough time or room for it. So I just showed you how to do this. And essentially, um, let's go back. What you do is you put the dates and just a simple explanation of, of what the transaction was. 
and then you come up with your closing balance here. These days the computer does all this. This is just bookkeeping. Uh, accountants don't do this kind of work. What, a, what accountants would do, would, the auditor would check it to make sure it's, it's accurate and the manager or the, uh, the CFO would uh, just be concerned that this was accurate information but someone else will enter the data. You need to know how, how it works. So let's, let's prepare the income statement. Uh, income statement looks like I did an edit so let me just fix this up here. There, that looks like it'll work. Our sales revenue for the year which we figure by simply going back to our journal entries and we figure out everywhere there was sales revenue. There's 2,500. Come down, there's a thousand. And there's 4,500. So we would have a T account somewhere that would tell us how much our sales revenue was. And we book it into the income statement. And then we subtract each of the expenses. Remember, income is revenues minus expenses. So we list them all, and it comes up, we have $2,300 in net income. So now let's do our retained earnings statement. We have a new business here, so we have zero beginning retained earnings. And we're increasing, uh, we have uh, $2,300 in net income, but we took money out of the business. And when we take money out, that's like a, uh, a withdrawal is the same thing as a dividend. Net income less dividends is how much is retained in the earnings. Think of the owner draw as unretained earnings. We, we didn't retain them. We paid them out of the business and we took them. So that meant in this example we, we left $1,300 of retained earnings in the company, which we'll put on the balance sheet. Now let's look at the balance sheet. Uh, let's, keep them, let's keep them up here. Okay, so in the balance sheet we did all that work to figure out what our cash account was and there it is. And you remember that entry with the account receivable where we had a client who or a customer who paid us more than they owed us. Well a receivable is always an asset and someday that client will buy more product and that receivable will swing the other way. So when we have an asset with a negative account I hope you understand what happened there. We just list it. It's typically an asset but right now it would be like a cash. If we overdrew our, our bank account for some reason and uh, we would have a negative cash balance, we would never list cash as a liability. So we would just keep the account name the same but we would show that there's a negative. And then the inventory, uh, that's how much inventory we have left after our sales. That machine we bought. So our total is 71700 Now let's come over here and look at our accounts. We had that $10,000 loan, uh, or sorry, the $10,000 uh, we used to buy inventory. So that's an account payable. Uh, we didn't pay the operating expenses on that one entry, so that's a $400 payable. And then there, there's the loan, $45,000. We paid $15,000 in capital at the beginning of this whole exercise, and we retained $1,300 of our earnings. Remember, the owner took a, a payment for himself at the end of the year so that the retained earnings is just a little bit less than our net income and we're in balance. So if you understand these entries and you understand how they came through to the uh, statements you should do absolutely fine on the test. If you have any questions about any aspect of this then uh, email me, uh, send me a, a question and I'll take a look at it. If uh, everything looks to be in balance but if you see something that might not be right let me know quickly and we'll get it straightened out. And we'll do, uh, I think we have one more, two more review sessions before you take the test. And uh, this one I think will be a particularly good exercise for you to make sure you can do right. So good luck. Let me know if you need any more help.